The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks for tuning in this morning, 9.06 a.m., Monday morning. We got about 25 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got a mixed market to kick things off. S&P is up about three points, quite the acceleration we had to end last week, of course, right into all-time highs in the S&P, all-time highs in the Dow. Both of those indices in the green to start things off right now. S&P is up by three. How about the Dow? We might get 35,000 today for the first time in the Dow, folks. The Dow right now, 34,806. We're up 120 points. Tech stocks pulling back a bit, 13,658. NASDAQ 100 off about a third of a percent. And the Russell up about two tenths percent, 2263. Crude up 46 cents, trading at 65.35. We got gasoline up 1.5 percent. Gasoline, we'll get into the hack on that colonial pipeline. Pretty dicey action when you think about uh, a necessary commodity like gasoline the largest pipeline existing, I believe, in North America. Let's jump to it right now, because quite a story out there. Uh, a hack knocks out a pipeline for the third day with traders on edge. Fuel traders are working to supply East Coast by tanker and barge. Now, check out this pipeline, folks. You're talking about from Houston up to Linden? Where is that? New Jersey? What are we talking about? Potentially? Woodbury? Yeah, New Jersey, I think. You're running all the way, talking about all the way up there. So Colonial halted all operations on the system late Friday. They suffered a ransomware attack. It affected some of its IT systems. No clarity when that's going to resume. Traders seeking vessels to deliver gasoline that would have been otherwise shipped on the Colonial system. Um, and that comes, let's see. I believe it is one of the largest, yes, uh, Supply East Coast by Tanker. I believe it's the largest pipeline. I saw that on somewhere. Nonetheless, that's a big one out there. Really dicey when you think about uh, we got to spend some money as a U.S. government to make sure that something like our infrastructure of our gas pipelines are protected from ransomware attacks, which seem like a pretty simple way to disrupt things in a pretty epic manner. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of work to do a ransomware attack if you're talking about shutting down pipelines across the country for gas. I mean, right now, it seems like they're going to be okay when you get into things. They have curbs for domestic transportation. Those have been erased to deal with the shortages. Um, you also have measures that they've considered with foreign tankers. There are ways to get around this. You have a uh, global head of commodities at Goldman Sachs talking about, more import importantly, Department of Transportation. They've list lifted restrictions around trucking and boat transportation. So you have other avenues. Uh, they're a major source of gas, diesel, and jet fuel to the East Coast. How about a capacity to send 2.5 million barrels a day from Houston as far as North Carolina and another almost million barrels to New York? Just a big number. Okay, let's jump around to what else we got going on. We got to talk about... Elon Musk and Dogecoin. It's just a, a lesson in supply and demand and how certain vehicles in this market are moving right now, folks. I've said it many times, and we're seeing it again. Dogecoin, much like almost GameStop at some of its euphoric levels, there's a nature where some of these vehicles for trading are kind of just becoming a game of hot potato, okay, where you just got to be the person that's not the last person in don't get stuck with the hot potato and you're fine okay now dogecoin it was remarkable folks i didn't actually get a chance to watch the beginning of snl i was watching something else i was up so i pull up dogecoin and what was happening dogecoin now let's see i believe the eighth was saturday night yeah so the eighth you want to find about 11 o'clock to 11 30 at night folks and it dropped from like 65 cents to 40 two pennies by the next morning by sunday morning at eight in the morning dogecoin had pulled back from a high of 74 cents approximately going into elon's appearance now that was saturday morning okay so maybe the real uh astute traders out there said you know what i'm gonna be buying all the way until saturday 
because Saturday's the day that I'm going to be taking my profits. It's at 74 cents almost. I don't want to be the person left holding the bag when Elon hosts SNL and he calls Dogecoin a hustle, which is what he did, folks. He called it a hustle. Um, but it's, it's at 40. And now it's at 51 cents, folks. I've been saying it. It's probably going to zero. Bitcoin's probably going to a million bucks eventually. I exaggerate. But there's just two different divergences. You know, TFNN could hire a couple programmers and create their own crypto overnight tomorrow. It would be very similar to Dogecoin. It would probably be worthless, just like Dogecoin is going to be. Now, TFNNs might not. Um, but you get the point. Just remarkable in terms of the real amount of money. All the articles last week were talking about Dogecoin with a market cap of potentially $90 billion. Folks, you traded from $0.74 cents to 40 What was the low? $0.41. Cents. You almost got cut in half. That's talking about tens of billions of dollars of supposed wealth. Right where people are considering this money that they have in their account invested in Dogecoin wiped out in a matter of like 12 hours. So just be careful out there. It's a real lesson in a big way. And another article just reiterating it, Binance, biggest crypto exchange Binance briefly suspends withdrawals. Did you hear that one, folks? Yeah, that's a great balance you got there in Dogecoin, but good luck getting it out. It's just remarkable the amount of risks that still exist in the crypto sector, when you talk about one of the biggest exchanges out there, if not the biggest, Binance briefly suspending, no, you can't have your money. You're not getting your money right now. We're not sending it out on Monday. Withdrawals are now resumed. Thank you for your patience. You don't want to see that, folks. You know, as, as a crypto exchange, that's just not an option, suspending withdrawals. But guess what? It was. They made the announcement on Twitter that they had stopped withdrawals, and then a half-hour letter said they had resumed, and they didn't elaborate on the reason behind the move. And the spokespeople for the exchange didn't immediately return a quest for comment. Makes zero sense, folks, right? Makes zero sense. Spikes on your back should be up. You should not have money on there. If you do, I'd get it off as quickly as you could until you can figure out what's going on. Not uncommon for them to deal with trading disruptions or errors, especially with thousands of new users flocking to. They're attracting more than 300 users a day. I mean, that's just inexcusable, though. If you have your money in there, folks, um, it's an unregulated industry in many exchanges occasions and that's one of the risks which is why some of the returns are so stark i mean bringing it back to dogecoin folks you don't have to go back far uh, putting this on a year you have to go back to january late january of this year to where dogecoin was under a penny it came into snl at about 74 cents all right now with that in mind ethereum is just on fire we're talking about four thousand dollars now ethereum uh one of the cryptos, if not the crypto, used for all the NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which is all the rage right now. Now, this this is not going to zero. Quite a different divergence. If you're going to get into the cryptos, folks, you want the wind at your back, right? Yeah, you might be able to make 70 times your money if you buy a crypto that's worthless and somehow the market gets in a frenzy and sends it up for no reason. But in terms of ones that can really appreciate, Ethereum, Bitcoin, you're going to have the wind at your back. I mean, check out this chart. Look at that chart on Ethereum. You don't have to go back far, folks. You just go back to November of 2020. We're trading at $500, let alone you go back to almost a year ago and you were at 200. That's 20 times your money. And a year ago, Ethereum, a much better investment than anything like Dogecoin. This thing is through the roof. Uh, eventually, you're going to get a pullback. I mean, just in February, you traded from 2000 down to 1400. You pull back 30% in a heartbeat. But Ethereum's here to stay. Bitcoin here to stay as well. Bitcoin this morning trading about 58,000. We hit almost 60,000 last night, 59,900. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be talking equities when we get back. Uh, we'll be talking earnings. We got Disney earnings coming up Thursday. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by one point right now, trading at 42.27, Dow up 115 points. As I mentioned, we get some earnings this week. So we got about nine out of 10 companies in the S&P 500 have already reported numbers. It's been quite a strong earnings season. Expectations pretty high going into this earnings season. Market has continued to trade higher, though. S&P at all-time highs, Dow at all-time highs. Disney out with their numbers on Thursday after the closing bell, I believe. Let's jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a $6.61 move and their earnings are yes may 13th so you're talking about thursday after the bell i believe with their earnings you're talking about 184 dollars stock now you get into in terms of the weekly with so called six dollars and 61 cents i talk about with kevin hinks their program think or swim fast market every trading day at 11 a.m live on tiger tv the implied volatility right so on a weekly basis right now you got an implied volatility of these earnings now this is going to re-register in terms of once the market's open at 9 30 in the morning this number as of the close on friday but nonetheless you can see about an eight dollar and fifty cent move they're looking for the week there will be some volatility here on the disney earnings it'll be interesting to see how the streaming plays into things which is probably the long-term growth of the company, which if you're a long-term investor on Disney, you should really care about. You shouldn't really care about. And this is my bias. We have Disney in my newsletter. I have Disney as well. You can't care about whether they're open in the parks this week or next week, folks. They're dealing with a lot of woes as an investor. And this is the fundamental take on things. All right, we're going to jump to the technical take on things as we come into earnings as well. Uh, you can't get caught up as a long-term investor of where the parks open a week or two. The market probably won't as well. That's coming. We're almost there. California, I believe, is at back open right now. Florida has been open for a while, not back at capacity yet. Uh, but Disney, you put this thing on a, let's put it on a three-year weekly to see the full run now. You go from 80 bucks to 203. We've pulled back. The area you want to look to, we're coming right back to it. Kind of the highs of where we started the year. That high, 183.40. This morning, we're going to open about $2 above that level. You can see we've been chopping around. I'm going to put this thing back on a daily so we can really zoom in on the action. As you see, we're coming right into an area of support. We're coming into earnings. 185 could be an area that you could add a little bit of a partial position if you're looking to get in Disney, folks. We're 20 bucks off the highs. We're at an area of support. We're going to have some volatility. It's earnings season. It's earnings week for Disney. Uh, and getting into what, in terms of the market, is expecting for Disney... Okay, excuse me. And as I, before I jump to it, there's a Yahoo Finance article. Uh, they have a great earnings calendar. If you ever need to check it out, folks, there's a few, but Yahoo does as well. I was just reading about what's on the schedule this week. We talked about retail sales Friday morning, CPI data 
Wednesday morning. Uh, we have earnings season as well. Disney coming out with their numbers. Well, now, as they mentioned, so March, strong, strong numbers for Disney+. Plus. They announced that they had topped 100 million subscribers on their last earnings. They crossed that just 16 months after launching the service. Can you imagine launching a TV streaming service and within 16 months, you have 100 million subscribers. There's very few companies out there in the world that could do that. Disney, one of them for sure. Uh, that's put them as a competitor with Netflix. Now, Netflix is a 208 million worldwide. Disney has talked about this. It's going to be interesting. So Netflix, all right, coming into Disney earnings on Thursday. Netflix really missed the mark on their last earnings, right? We're going to zoom in on the action. There's the drop off from their last numbers. They missed in a big way. That was their earning. They come, on, come into that number at about 550. We're now trading about 503 on Netflix. Their numbers, they only added 3.98 million in the first quarter. The market was looking for 6.3. They guided below estimates as well. So Disney coming into that market, probably a little wary. Now, what's the difference here? Has Netflix started to wane? Are they Have they started to slow their growth because they're a mature company? Is Disney new enough that they're going to be able to meet expectations when Netflix could not? We're going to find out Thursday. Uh, Disney talked about in March that they expect to reach 230 and 260 global million global subscribers by the end of fiscal 2024. And I think that's just for Disney, let alone when you combine ESPN and Hulu. That number rises to 300 to 350 million, I believe. So that's going to be stark numbers. Now they talk about the parks, right? You got Disneyland, Paris. I don't even talk about Paris, right? Paris, California, really just getting back into things. Overall, Wall Street's going to be looking for Disney. They're going to be looking for earnings of 28 cents a share. This is Thursday. Revenue, 15.85 billion. Fourth straight year-over-year -year drop in sales. That's what they'll be looking for. Now, Disney's up 1.7% year-to-date, as I showed you just on the chart. We've pulled back that support area about 183.40, which is correlating to the previous high. Uh, as it mentions, underperforming the S&P 500. Disney had really that huge run from November when we get the vaccine efficacy to the highs it made above 200. We've pulled back a bit, uh, but we get their numbers out in terms of what they'll be looking for, and that was the Disney breakdown. Jumping around to some of the other stocks, now, Thursday's a big one because we get Airbnb as well, and we get DoorDash and Coinbase. It'll be interesting. Coinbase just going public, right? Let's see how they're reacting this morning. They're going to be opening up about $3. We get a bid ask around two sixty six. dollars Since this thing goes public, it's been a slow ride down. Now, Coinbase should be helped out a lot by the fact that the legitimate coins are just doing phenomenally. Bitcoin holding so well near 60000 right? Ethereum. Trading about 4200 Ethereum was just at $200 within a year ago. Coinbase, though, we're talking about a valuation of about $60 billion. All the talk was maybe $100 billion originally when that thing was trying to go public. Airbnb. They'll be out with their numbers on Thursday as well after the bell, I believe. Uh, yes, after the bell on Thursday, Airbnb. Now, let's check out what we got going on. Pricing in about $11. I'm going to check back on these in terms of the expected moves when the option market opens at 930. But they'll be out with their numbers. Let's just scan down some of the companies we got. And we're going to jump to them this morning. We already have Marriott and Cody, I believe, out with their numbers. Tyson might be out with their numbers as well. Is that correct? Let's check it out. All right. I know that Cody is out with their numbers, I believe. They sure are. They're trading lower. There you go. So they're out with their numbers. Let's jump to some of the move stocks that we have going on right now. Give me one second. We're going to jump to Marriott and Cody to kick things off. So Cody numbers, break-even fiscal third quarter, matching estimates, revenue in line with estimates, sales 3.3% below year-ago levels. Wish uh, some of these, we're going to have to dig in. I want 2019 comps, folks. You know, 2010 comps, it's an anomaly year. You can't really go off those levels. Uh, 2019 comps, tell me where we are compared to the last year that life was normal prior to COVID. Cody, though, trading lower to the tune of about, I mean, that's quite a move, 70 cents for a $10.34 stock. Marriott out with their numbers as well. Pretty choppy action, a little bit lower to about 145. Marriott earned 10 cents a share for the first quarter. They beat by three cents. Revenue slightly below forecast. They said, though, they're seeing a rebound in demand. With vaccinations, you have shares down a bit this morning. What else we got going on? Tyson out with their numbers. Tyson, maker of chicken and food. A little volatility. We're down a few bucks. Let's put this on a three-year weekly even. Quite a run we've had recently, but not quite back up to where we were prior to COVID. You were trading at $94 and change. You get cut in half to 42 
We've seen a slow rise back to 78 on their earnings. They're going to trade down a little bit lower this morning. They owned a dollar 30 for a share. They beat dollar 12 estimate revenue also above forecast. They expect its chicken segment to continue to experience some pressure to a to a challenging labor environment and severe winter weather. Interesting. All the variables going into these companies and they're producing earnings. Talking about interesting uh, labor environment, right? That's one way to put things. A challenging labor environment. Of course, 266,000 jobs added in the month of April. That number out Friday. All the discussion about potentially wages, how that plays into things. Tyson weighing on things a bit, but that's a strong company and I imagine they'll get back up to those levels eventually. $78 uh, for Tyson. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the opening bell in three minutes. Give us a call. What are you trading this week? 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got S&Ps positive by a point. The Dow positive by 112. Tech stocks slightly in the red. NASDAQ 100 off 76 points. The Russell off by one point. And I got a chart of copper up here, up another 1.2% on a monthly basis. Quite an acceleration. You're talking about when you go back to March of 2020, copper was under $2.00. We're trading above 480 right now, just bringing this, whoops, just bringing this back for a daily for the year. You have copper. I mean, look at just the last few days. Just the last few days, we're up from 4, 
50 on the dot, the low from May 6th. We're trading as high as 488.8 to 480 right now. Just a remarkable trend. I mean, you look at all these commodities, right? So we're on copper right now. We talked about gas getting a spike because of the hack of the Colonial Pipeline. Let alone, you go down the list, platinum continuing to run. I'm just going to put these back here on a three-year weekly to see the acceleration from 562 to 1276. Platinum, the highest 1384. Palladium hitting above 3000. I believe that's last week. Yes, yeah, sitting at 2993. Just crazy action across the board. Let's take a look at notes and bonds right now. We got the 10-year trading up three ticks. You see where we are? Backing things up, quite an area of consolidation maybe as we're sitting at 132.27. You're correlating to a 382 retracement of the entire move we got. Now, that's the entire move from October of 2018 in the 10-year all the way to the spike high of COVID, we'll call it, March of 2020. You pull back to a 382. You also pull back to an area we had of resistance turning into a little bit of a support at about the 131.24, 132.24 area, chopping around those levels on the 10-year. As I mentioned, you're talking about a yield right now, 1.575%. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how the markets are opening this morning. We'll jump to the biggest of them all, Apple shares. Apple, zooming in on 15-minute, we're down 1.1%, and that is a drop-off, folks, to kick things off. Tech stocks looking to pull back. We get the NASDAQ 100, now down almost 115 points. My Microsoft shares dropping as well, 249. Technology stocks, pretty remarkable, right? A couple weeks ago, they crushed out of the park with earnings, and they've all kind of waned a bit. Amazon shares pulling back, 32.59. Jump to Netflix shares pulling back, down a percent, 1.04 percent at 498. Uh, Facebook shares giving it up as well, 312. Google shares down 1.3 percent. Google, one of the strongest ones out here. Watch out for the tech stocks, and there's a drop for you from 13,000. 650, 13,603 S&P is basically flat right now. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping around to some of the other stocks uh, making moves. You got all the copper stocks. Freeport, McMoran, Hecla, Southern Copper. Let's just jump to some of them. FCX. I mean, look at some of these runs, folks. If you haven't tried out my dad's gold report, folks, Great time to do it. He puts out a new report uh, throughout the day Monday. I believe that's going to come out shortly. Gold report, check it out. Some of these equities covered in there. Freeport, McMoran, up another 2.5%. Remarkable. Just at the beginning of the year, you were trained at 25. You're trained at 45. You were just trained at 30, March 25th. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you think this run, how do you buy a, an equity that's ridden, risen from 7 bucks to 30? Well, you buy it because it might be at 45 bucks in the next month and a half. Uh, Hecla. HL, yeah, up 4% today. When they say Southern Copper, SCCO as well, up 5.8%. Just runs across the board. Now, gold's catching a bit as well. I mean, a lot of the gold equities, what do we have gold doing this morning so far? We got gold right now up $15 at $18.45. Gold, interesting, jumping right to the 3A2 line. You know, you know, the entire move we had for gold. From the lows of 1450 to the highs of 2089, you bounce off the 618. You've now risen to exactly the 3A2. We'll see where we go from here. You had a little bit of a consolidation from late November into February around that area, 1845. We're trading within a dollar of that price level of gold, 1844 this morning. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping around. Let's see. We got Live Nation getting an upgrade. They said a 13% pullback in terms of Jeffrey, saying a 13% pullback has provided an attractive entry for concert and live events promoter. Live, they call them a pure recovery play. They're up a little bit this morning. LYV is their symbol. Yeah, they're up 2.3%. That's a weekly. Putting them on a daily. We were up to 94. I guess that pullback, look at that acceleration they had on their earnings coming up. $81, up another 2.3%. Folks, I imagine that it's going to be a phenomenal time to be in the large event business eventually. Once, once we, we get over some of this vaccine hesitancy, please, if you can, folks, encourage people in your life because that's what it's going to take. Um, the vaccine is safe. It is effective. Get out there. Get it done. We can get back to life. I imagine it's going to happen, folks. I'm very optimistic, but it's taken longer than unfortunately it has to. But once it happens, concerts, I mean, can you imagine once we get back to that level that there's no more fear um, at all and people are comfortable being around large groups? I just imagine things are going to be selling out for the meantime for a year or two, at least. It'll be a good time. Now, you jump into what this company is worth, right? You jump into the Analyze tab, the fundamentals. You're talking about a company about $18 billion, quite a company for sure. But you just shaved $13 still off the, the high point that we got back to the last earnings around March. 
All right. All right. So let's jump around to what else we got going on. Let me check out headlines we have. So we talked about Disney. We talked about other companies. Let's take a look at some of the other companies we have with earnings this week. So Bumble is out with their numbers. It should be interesting. They just went public, online dating, right? Bumble, there's their entire makeup of trading. Not quite the start you'd want. 8480 was the price they got February 12th. It's been a slow decline since then. You pull up the Analyze tab, you're talking about a company valued at about $6.5 billion. Not bad for an online dating site. Uh, $56, but man, you're chopping around these lower levels of $55. And they got a lot to talk about when you're talking about a company, $6.5 billion dollars it's going to be um the second time they've come out with earnings but as you see we're under the price level we're at on their last earnings they're on thursday morning with their numbers and jumping over to the number you're talking about a 10 percent move the market is pricing in to new equity it would make sense right volatility but 10 percent they'll be looking for in their numbers as they come out excuse me okay what else we got going on let's jump to some of the other companies we have with earnings this week let's jump down okay so after the bell tonight, we get Roblox. They're like they're like a very talked about company, right? Let's just pull them up. RBLX, they just went public as well. Gaming platform, I believe it is, right? Roblox. So they have more than a 10% move. Yeah, so they just go public in the beginning of March. We're trading at $67. Their numbers are after the bell tonight. You're talking about a 10% move. Now, folks, if you think, if you trade options, if you're in the option market, if you watch the fast market program, at 11 o'clock. If you subscribe to my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, I encourage you to give it a try. 30-day money-back guarantee at everything we do at TFNN, folks. Uh, I'm going to have a report out later this afternoon for subscribers. I always send out a report on Monday, along with updates throughout the week. You really want, when you're ever you're trading multi-leg options, like right now, walk through Roblox, okay? They have you're talking about a $7.52 move priced into options. That might be a great time to absorb some premium. Now listen, the market is pricing that in because this is the first time a company is gonna report numbers as a public company. That's a volatile period of uncertainty when you're coming into how the market's gonna to react to their first numbers as a public company and they're reporting. We know their numbers from prior quarters when they go public. It's a little bit different when you start posting those numbers and see how the supply and demand reacts. Now the point being, you get over to the Analyze tab, we'll talk about adding simulated trades. The news event, $7.50, the implied volatility for the entire move for this week, okay? is about an eight dollar and 14 cent move what you really want to be careful of folks is what i'm going to get to is here you want to make sure there's enough volatility in an equities options before you start trading multi-leg options to make sure now just for instance the stock's trading at 67.50 look at some of the bid ask spreads folks on some of these puts and calls you want to be very careful you're talking about a dollar 50 put call spread here and in terms of a buy the bid and the ask Percentage-wise, almost not able to make money unless you're able to get in the middle of that spread. We'll finish this up when we get back from the break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Shame on me. Sorry for that. Checking back in, opening up my mic. S&P is a little bit negative, down four points. The Dow continuing to show strength up 185. Jumping over back to the conversation in terms of liquidity and options, you can see how wide the bid-ask spread is in something like Robolux, not traded to the degree of any of the big tech stocks. Maybe you're not going to get the same amount of liquidity, all right? You might say to yourself, man, look at this. You got $7.45 of premium priced into a $67 equity. If you think the market isn't going to move more than 10% in this equity, you could say, man, I'm going to sell some of this premium, right? Okay, well, what are you going to do? Maybe you're going to sell an at-the-money or a little bit out-of-the-money bid-ask spread. Now, yeah, you know, you get five bucks away, it starts to vary, but you're still talking about 25 cents, 30 cents of bid-ask spread. If you're trading two sides of this, you're talking about 60 cents, you're talking about paying almost basically 10% of the premium you would collect in possibly a bid-ask spread. The, the other thing to consider, can you get out of this trade at a fair price if it is not liquid enough when you're dealing with multiple leg options? Just something to consider, folks. Um, when you're looking at these, you can look at the equities, look at the options, make sure you have that liquidity, um, make sure that the bid-ask spread is tight enough if you're going to be trading multi-leg options. All right, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Fundamental news over the weekend. And man, it is tough news. The horse racing industry... It is a tough one, um, to put it lightly. Talk about being rattled with some problems. So Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit, if you didn't see it, folks, some of the details are staggering. So you have arguably one of the most famous trainers ever out there, Bob Baffert. His horses have failed five tests in a little more than a year prior to this. I believe that is coming into the Derby suspended. Yes. Yeah, surprise. He's denied wrongdoing. Uh, I believe they have to confirm that failed test for him to be stripped of the Kentucky Derby winner. The second place runner would be um, given the title. It's only the third horse in the 147 year history to receive such a penalty after finishing first. Uh, they have to take a second sample. Now this article was as of yesterday. Maybe that second sample's done yet. Not sure, but was What's so wild in all of this is that I watched some of the, um, I watched some of the Derby that came out. I think it was like May first, maybe it was like ten days ago. Something maybe it was last weekend. I think it was last weekend, right? Uh, watched some of the Derby. Baffert, I'm very familiar with just from watching the big races that go on, and horse racing has had a notorious history of doping and so forth. Now the drug found in Medina Spirit System was betamethasone, a cortico corticosteroid injected into joints to reduce pain and swelling. Uh, that was a conference made Sunday that they were talking about. Um, and it was five times that this horse 
uh, not this horse, that his horses had been tested positive. Now, the thing that is most remarkable, I'm scro scrolling down here to get down to, is that twice, and I want to find this, Yes, regulators in Arkansas last month upheld a ruling that banned substance had been found in two of Baffert's horses, but they decided to reduce his penalty from a suspension to a fine. So two horses of Baffert's, like last month, had been tested positive. It's just remarkable how much this stuff persists, and I hope they really slap him with the penalty um, and ban him, and he's marked forever, um, because it's a bummer hurting these horses like he is. And who do we have? We got a caller, folks. We got my dad on the line. What's happening? Good Monday morning, Dad. Oh, what's happening, man? What's well, happening, well, man? Well, Bridget and I are sitting here overlooking Crystal Bay, and we're bumming out when you're talking about this hoss, too, because that was an amazing race, man, and it's such garbage, man, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it really is, man. I, they got to get their act together. I don't know how that happens, right? You know, I mean, we do know how it happens. You know, you see it. But what, what I found so interesting, right, is that in any other sport, right, baseball, they're talking about all these guys that juiced, right? Still, they're talking about Mark Ooh. McGuire. Where's the coverage on NBC, you know, door-to-door -door coverage and Baffert's like I the know. glorious Baffert the whole day, and nobody really knows that he's just testing positive left and right, and they're not they're not finding him. I mean, that should have been a story in, in all that people would care about that should have been out there, but of course not, because they're glorifying their own coverage to get ratings for an industry that's just riddled with drugs and these horses. Right, and you know, that when you were just bringing that, that deal up, so he got a fifteen hundred dollar fine. Well, it's worth millions of dollars. It's like a fifteen hundred dollar <laughs> fine. This is like insane. He's and he's arguably, I mean, the most acclaimed trainer ever, man. I think he's got. I think that was his seventh Derby winner. Um, it, it was that he it had. Was. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Unreal. Yeah. I know. It is. And but thankfully all, they got him this time, and it, hopefully yeah, this really but, wakes up. Um, and they talk about that. I guess there's a new law that's going into effect in 2022. Uh, yeah, so Horse Racing Integrity and Sa Safety Act passed last year in Congress. It's going to take effect July of next year, and it calls for broad overseeing. The FTC is going to be writing rules and penalties um, enforced by the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. So he was probably trying to get in the last hurrah, right, before they set the rules. And it's a bummer, man, because those horses pay the penalties, folks. It's That's it. It's just animal cruelty. I know. And you, yeah. and you know what's so terrible, Tommy, is that we all like it, you know, and Trust me, folks, we're, we're from a trading family anyway. So, um, but it's so sad because we love animals, man, and, and they're jacking them up, man. And yeah. It's like pure BS. It's unbelievable. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they go over the, you know, these drugs, they basically can mask injury. So you have pre-race inspections, number one, that the horse can't get found. And then number two, of course, that they have these drugs where they just mask any pain the horse has while he's running, and then he hurts himself, of course. Um, so right. yeah, and that that yeah. horse was incredible. I, I think that was it was an awesome race too, I've, and it just, I've ever seen. I mean, because yeah. his his spirit was freaking amazing, right? I mean, it really it was, was a great so. race. It was it was cool to watch, and it was just a bummer to see. I know, but <laughs> anytime around. there's money hey, involved, so this, right? That's the bummer, and you got money and fame involved, and people are going to float oh, yeah. the rules, and it's a bummer. Yeah. So. Uh, market wise, yeah, interesting, right? I mean, the, the Dow Industrial doesn't Oof. stop, right? <laughs> it doesn't, man. What we hit 34,924 in the futures. I got a chart line up here, man. Bud Rolf's our man, right? We've broken above the chan channel line, we came back and tested it on May 4th. We tested it with a low on May 4th of 33,654. We're 1,300 points above that price level in six days, uh, four trading days. So, yeah, it's quite a rocket ship, man. We're within 100 points of 35,000 on the futures. <laughs> Get those hats out, man. <laughs> Get them out, man. That's right. And actually, you know what? As I say that, I just pulled up the cash. We just hit 35,000 in the cash um, for the Dow. So you'll see that headline today for sure. Amazing. And, you know, yeah. the NASDAQ, you know, my, my take, folks, is this NASDAQ has short-term top. So we'll see where this shakes out. But it's going to be really intriguing, man, because it just can't seem to catch a bid. So we'll no. see it. But we'll they're see they're chatting about Apple the in the den and, uh, this morning. Down one going, point. Man. 1.2% Apple dropping out of bed this morning. I mean, how's it feel to be some of these tech executives, right? I mean, it's been cloud nine for the last year as these stocks have been through the roof. But it's got to be tough coming into earnings season, taking in $10 billion of revenue more than the market thinks, and you just can't find a bid over a couple of weeks. I know, man. Uh, there's no yeah. doubt. And, you know, the bottom line is that if we switch to the metals, I mean...
copper. Copper's amazing. Copper's at an all-time high, man. Copper, copper just I know. blew away its uh, all-time high. Listen, hang with us, all right? Can you hang with us? Cool. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to keep my absolutely. dad on the line. Perfect. We'll talk some metals. I'm sure people want to see what's going on. We have gold right now up $12 this morning, folks. We'll be right back talking metals. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps minus by three. We got the Dow breaking 35,000. We got my dad, Tom O'Brien, on the phone, and we're talking some metal. So gold up $9, $18.40. And yeah, how about copper, right? Copper uh, continuing. We had 488.8. And I was talking about this earlier. Um, man, just a rocket ship, and it's not stopping, man. You put this thing even on a monthly and a weekly, it's just uh, gangbusters. It's, it's amazing. And for all you folks that are in the metals market, what you're going to see here, uh, is that copper is a byproduct, you know, of the gold and silver market. So what you're going to see, I suspect, in another 90 days, we're going to see some big numbers, man, coming out of these equities because it, it, the, the byproduct, most times it's like, okay, it's not a big deal. But guess what? At uh, 478 a pound, man, it's a monster deal. So it's going to be pretty wild. And the dollar, you know, on Friday, I mean, just got absolutely smoked. I mean, it looks like the dollar wants to go to 89. We're at 90.177 right now. So yeah. we'll see uh, where this whole thing shakes out. You know, I heard you talking about Deutsche coin. Is, is, is that is dog coin? What is it Deutsche coin? Deutsche coin. coin. Think of it like a Doji, yeah. except Doge coin. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean that that is something else, man. I mean, it, you know what's so incredible is that being 
in the finance business, it's like, okay, man, how do you analyze that? You can't. I mean, it's impossible. It's like, it's, yeah. You know what I mean? We can sit here and say, oh, why, why didn't we buy it? Because it's worth a lot of money, but it's impossible. It's as long as you and know that it might – I mean, it's a hustle. That's, that's it's like a hustle, and Elon called it a hustle. And guess what, man? You can make a lot of money hustling, though, right? Uh, as exactly. I'm sure you have. Exactly. But there's nothing. There's no difference from this stop dropping from seventy cents to fifty cents with it dropping from seventy cents to five cents. That's the difference. You know, they're all arbitrary numbers if they might eventually go to zero, because yeah. it's just who's paying yeah. what next, um, which is a dicey game of of uh, depending on how much money you're playing it for, man. But they're playing it for tens of billions of dollars in Dogecoin. Right. And, you know, I heard you talking about Ethereum. I'm hoping, yeah. I think, it, remember, we haven't heard from Paul for a long time. Remember Paul? I remember Paul. Paul, Paul he crypto was man, Ethereum, yeah. man. I hope he still owns all that. He's a, I hope so, like a billionaire. too. I wish he I did. socked some away at about 200 bucks, man. Because it was. Uh, okay, pal. Love you, man. Love you, too, man. Have a great, great day. Job. Thanks for the okay. call. Right. Thanks, Bye. man. Folks, thanks for tuning in. We got SPs down by three. We got the Dow. 35,000 in the Dow. There we go. Stay tuned, folks. We've got Basil Chapman coming up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back, folks.